Before we get to your scheduled video, please remember that likes and comments tell YouTube to promote our work to other people, and subscribing to the channel tells you when something new drops. You can also head to the link tree in the description to peruse my books, join us on Discord, or support us on Patreon. You can get episodes of Journey of Wrestling and Violent Profiles early, as well as a load of other treats. Even just a dollar a month earns you a name drop for being cool. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the show. Greetings and salutations, fellow retro Polaroids of my cats. It is I, Eric J. Chucky, joined as always by the boy. Hey. Plenty of time. <laughs> this is the Two Nerds Podcast, and today we are talking about heavily spoilery, immediately out the gate, off the bat, Elden Ring Shadow of the Erd Tree Bosses Tier List. Um, man, it might be fun to do both sometime, but now is not that time. We did an individual one for Vanilla. We're doing an individual one for Sote. Um, we'll see if we want to revisit it in the future. No. It would be no. too long. No? Too long? What if I, this gets a lot of views? Well, yeah, if it gets... If this gets, like, 5,000 views, I will do Elden... I'll become an Elden Ring tier list content ranker, man. We'll just keep doing it. Yeah. And as our opinions change every week, you'll yeah. be like, wow, they're growing. You know, I, I, I did a lot of runs on this on this guy this week, and uh, yeah, I'm not feeling it this week. See, tier. <laughs> uh, before we get to that, we do have to do two sets of shout-outs. Shout-out set number one is the people who are cool. Why don't you read that beautiful bean footage? Uh, that would be Passion Killer 7-Eleven, a guy from Ohio, Rob, Harmony, Distrusive KTL, on the tip of your tongue, and the Dollar General himself, DG. Because he gives us a dollar. There you go. Oh, man. I, he's, he's a general. It's he's all a, coming he's, together. He's a military commander. Um, we also need to shout out the man who stalks the fields, who created this tier list. And did a fine job. Mm -hmm. Good images with text, with names, A+. Plus. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about that. Great icon, too. Uh, that's just really... It's got energy. So, uh, this is what we're dealing with. You had plenty of time to get out of here. Spoilers, 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 spoilers. Uh, we've got uh, S, A, B, C, D, F, and somehow we missed it. Entirely possible. I just wanted to put it in there just in case. There are going to be some I missed, because I'm not as thorough about this as you are. No, and we discussed that in our Shadow of the Erd Tree podcast which you can go watch if you haven't already. It came out before this. Uh, so that we got that out of our system. insane systems. if yeah. we put it the other way around. Uh, so we're starting out with the Black Jail Knight. Black Jail Knight. You, he's one of the first bosses you can come across, mm -hmm. and he's a real good example of go get your fragments, boy. Yeah, he is really <laughs> letting you know. Or you can do what I did and get good. That's the other option. That's what I did, too. Uh, I thought he was fine. Um... I hate to put him in C tier because I think he was well designed, but this is Elden Ring. They're all going to be well designed, and I think he's pretty bog standard. Uh, I feel like we often end up starting tier lists with C tier. Yeah. Maybe that's just because of how they, you know, they end up going. We'll, we'll revisit him later. See if he, see if upon reflection, after going over all the other bosses, he might change. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Black Knight Erdred. This is uh, just a Black Knight. This is just this is the one uh, in that castle Andrew. that you have to go through a tunnel past the dragon who's fighting all those guys. Uh, he's the one who gives you the winged jump, the crucible wing jump, uh, Ash of War. He's fun. He's fun. He's got a dual blade. Uh, he gives me the Ash of War that is, I'm going to be honest, about 30% of the reason why I bought the DLC. So he goes minimum... B tier just for being the thing that drops that thing I like. I don't remember him that well, but I'm I'm happy to uh, to let you have this. Um, you know what? We're already here. I don't think I fought Ralva the Great Bear, Red Bear. Uh, I know I didn't. I think I know where he is, but he's out of the way. It's it's what you imagine. It's a it's a it's a bear with some dragon parts. Uh, I think he drops an Ash of War or Spell. I think it's a spell. That is his roar, and it's just, like, not very good. <laughs> Maybe I did fight him and forgot about it. Yeah, he, he's like, he's, it's, he drops a, I think, he is a joke because in the DLC, in the beta of the original game, uh, Rune Bears drop Dragon Hearts. Oh, right, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, and this is that. This is a Dragon Bear. That's pretty funny. I yeah. like that joke. Um, Dryleaf Dane, who I believe, unless you start static, you only fight, uh, during the melee. Yeah, like, you only end up fighting Dryleaf Dane if you want to, or when he wants to. But he, 
Y'all eventually gonna throw hands. Yeah, he's one of the two that you cannot avoid fighting. Um, I... Uh, he was the last one that I killed in that fight. What about you? Oh, uh, the other one. Uh, the, the leader. We'll okay. get to her in a minute. Okay. I kind of... I kind of fucking ran Dryleaf Dude's fade. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, he wasn't <laughs> anything that special. Cool character, though. Uh, you know what, though? I, I As we established with uh, Edred... I do give points based on what they drop, and he drops Dane's footwork. I can do fucking karate now. I'm going to put him ahead of Edred just because of the cool visuals and the cool drops. And I actually use Dane's footwork, uh, whereas the, the Crucible thing was just a fun toy. I don't know that I fought Red Bear. I, I know there were some mausoleums I didn't go into. I did not go into many of those I don't mausoleums. Think I, fought Red Bear. I, don't even, I don't even know that I noticed a lot of those mausoleums. A lot of them are out of the way. Um, Death Knight Fog Rift. Oh, Death Knight Parentheses Fog Rift. Yeah. I think I fought this, but I, it's just a Death Knight. Did yeah, he? I think I breezed past this. Yeah, just not memorable. Yeah, no, I, I think I just sort of walked, I, I dog walked him. It was not memorable and he wasn't, he's not cool. Uh, Death Knight Scorpion River. Different Death Knight, different mausoleum. I think I fought this one. No, not the mausoleums. The no, the the I don't know the crypts, catacombs, catacombs, crypts, whatever they're called in the DLC. The the place with all the imps. Uh, the guy who wrote your favorite song, Ancient Dragon Man. Ah, uh, yes. He was fine. I kind of like the NPC Invader version of him a little better. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I don't know. He was just kind of like a. It's a little annoying, but that's it. Well, he was He's at the bottom of one of those many legacy dungeons that's in between me and a new zone. Uh, if you're going to be annoying, if you're going to be the guy who is acting as the ticket taker for the next ride, you best be cool. <laughs> and it's like kind of cool and it's, it's an old reference, but like... To Dark Souls 3? Yeah, I just it didn't blow me up. Um, where did I put him? I already forgot. C? C? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, Jagged Peak Drake. Ah, oh, such an easy joke. It's right there. He's not like us. F you. <laughs> I don't get it. Oh. Uh, I don't listen to <laughs> losers. But, uh, no, I actually really like this fight. Yeah. Uh, this is this is the fight where two dragons are fighting each other no. and you can choose... Yes, it is. This is the other Jagged Peak Drake. No. Yeah, I, I, I prove it to you. Jagged Peak Drake. That's just one guy. It's the guy you fight before you get to. Jagged Peak Drake, the one with the friend. Oh, I see. They separated those out. Yeah. The the one where you fight the two guys, one of them, the one with the boss bar, is called Jagged Peak Drake. Yeah, they're all just Jagged Peak Drakes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm gonna say this guy is uh, much like the other guys. It's just it's just it's a just, Drake. It's just a dragon. It's this just... guy gets elevated though. Because that's be, a cool thing. Yeah, they're, they're start they're they're having a they're having a squabble, and you can get involved or not, and that's great. I turned it into a triple threat match. Me, <laughs> I let them fight, and then got involved when uh, they were done. Yeah, you um, you chose the path of Godzilla, and that's respectable. I have to uh, look at this because I always say his name. Oh, uh, yeah, F tier. Ancient Dragon Senesax. You hate Ancient Dragons. I uh, Ancient Dragons aren't fun to fight. They're, um, I actually really like fighting regular dragons. I think they're cool. I think they're, uh, I think they have a cool move set. It's fun to try and hit the head. They, they fight fair in that they don't spend all of the, all of the time up in the air doing stuff. And you can, most importantly, lock on to the pieces of them. Because they're giant and you should be able to do that. Ancient dragons, you can only lock onto their head, which spends 90% of every fight way too high to hit, so that's pointless. Uh, and Senesax is especially uh, is especially a bastard because uh, Senesax does lightning damage, like all ancient dragons do, but instead of being in Theramazula, which is all nice and dry, Senesax is on a lake. So the lightning spreads everywhere. Now, you would say, well, that's fair. That's a, that's an environmental hazard. Just stay off the lake a bit. Stay on the solid ground where the lightning won't spread. Ah, ha, ha. You see, that would make sense if that's actually how that worked. It's not. Even if you're on the solid ground, the lightning still spreads everywhere. Fuck Senesax F tier. 
I would say C tier, so splitting the difference, D tier. That's I fair. don't feel as strongly about ancient dragons. I think they're fine. I agree with you. I prefer regular dragons. Um, but th these are fine. They're a fine alternative. Um, we'll put in between the Death Knights. Uh, I don't think I fought Demi-Human Swordmaster Onza. Uh, you know, alright, so he's a little Demi-Human guy, and also he is Yoda from Attack of the Clones. I don't think I fought him. He has a little, um, my tiny waterfowl dance that's much easier to dodge. Okay. Where would you put him? Because I didn't fight him. Eh, he's just, just C tier. C tier. <laughs> Uh, better than Dragon Man? Yes. Okay. Better than the Black Jail Knight? No. No, no, no. Because he's so out of the way. He's over in the Blue Flower Zone, if memory serves. Okay. Uh, I didn't fully exhaust exploration in that place, so that makes sense. Uh, Bail the Dread. Bail the Dread rips. Bail the Dread, I got to him way too early. Way too few Shadow Shards. He fed me my ass like ten times. And then I left and did the whole rest of the DLC and came back with the proper amount of Shadow Shards. And I fed him his ass. Um, I think he's a cool set-piece character. I think he's a cool lore character. Uh, I think he's one of the better dragons to fight. I think he's a better fight than Placidus X, certainly. I don't remember if I fought Placidus X. Um... Uh, he was, I don't know, good, I guess. I, I don't feel very strongly about him, but Bale, he was cool. Bale rips. I would put him A tier, personally. Okay. Um, I'll allow it for now. We'll revisit that later. Uh, this is Curseblade Labyrinth. This is the Curseblade that's a boss. Yes, this is the Curseblade that it has a boss health bar. Curseblades in general are pretty neat. Yeah. They're hard to fight in that I don't ever know what the fuck they're doing. I'm, I'm going to say top of C tier it's, for it's now. Like fighting a bay, it's like fighting a Beyblade that's pissed off at me. <laughs> they're pretty predictable once you figure out what they're doing. I have never done that. But it see. takes a lot. They use a lot of movesets reminiscent of and maybe even copied from uh, certain enemies in Dark Souls 3. Among them the goat guys. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, and I, I really like them for that reason. But they're not, nothing special. And you fight so many that don't have a boss bar. This one does, though. Yeah. And he does nothing unique. He just has a boss bar. Uh, Chief Blood Friend. Probably his name. Uh, Blood Fiend. I don't know that I ever fought the Chief Blood Fiend. I don't think I did. Wow. I, somehow we missed this. Well, you know what? Because he's a Blood Friend, top, top of somehow we missed this. Uh, Rakshasa, I did fight. Uh, where would you put Rakshasa? Uh, you did not? I thought no. you had Rakshasa's stuff. Oh, you know what? No, I definitely did. Yeah. I have his katana. Yeah. He made no impact on my memory banks. You rate him. <laughs> um, he was easier than the Black Jail Knight. So, uh, do you want to put the Demi-Human or Dragon Yeah, Man? I'm neutral. Okay. Mm. Um, Death Rite Fiend? Is that what I'm seeing? It's just a Death Rite Bird. bird. Oh. It's in the Red Flower Zone. It is yeah. straight up just a Death Rite Bird. It had another trick to it, if I remember, but I have forgotten this that This one's also a... Um, the guy who's with the boat, the Tibia Mariner, in that this, this Death Rite Bird also summons Skeletons. That's right, you're right. Um, I didn't vibe with this one as much as the other Death Rite Birds. It's just a fucking straight... Yeah. It's, a, it's a Death Rite Bird. I fought, like, dozens of them by this point. I'm gonna put it above the Jagged Peak, Drake. Do you have an argument with that? The single? Yeah, no, that's okay. fine. Uh, this one was kind of a cool fight. The Lamenter. Um, oh, it was a yeah, puzzle yeah, fight. Yeah. This is the one who makes who has clone jutsu, right? Yeah, this one yeah. is this one is the one with the Loki clone bullshit. It, it's sort of a reference to a Bloodborne boss. I know you. Oh, no, played I have not played Bloodborne. I played a little bit of. I played, I think, more Bloodborne than Sekiro by exactly one boss. I don't know if this was real, but I heard you say Bone Bone. Bone Bone. And now I want that game. Bone Bone. <laughs> I want the, the fucking loud orchestral ominous FromSoft music, and then the Bone Bone logo to pop up. Um, yeah, th those were the bones snapping. Yeah. Thank you for the audio. Uh, the Lamenter was fun. Nothing crazy. I got there way late in game, so it was just a matter of beating the, the pants off of him. I happened to have a weapon with wild strikes on it at the time. So, oh, you got like nine clones? That's fine. Come this way. You were a very literal representation of what I was doing the hard way. Yeah. Uh, I think he's got Riz. So yeah, I'm, he's, I'm gonna... he's, he's fun. He's got a good look, and that's a fun mechanic. And you can turn into that. Yeah, yeah, nice. that's pretty cool. I'm gonna say B tier. Uh, the putrescent knight. Um, uh, this is another boss fight I probably should have done earlier in the game, 
but uh, I skipped past it. If you listen to our Elden Ring uh, Shadow of the Earth Tree podcast, um, I just didn't realize there were more paths to go south of the big castle and didn't get into this until way later in the game. So I didn't have as hard of a time with him as a lot of people did. Putrescent Knight whipped my ass. Putrescent Knight was the first boss in the DLC I had to build against. I had to go and, like, change up my, my talismans and change up the weapon I was using and, and specifically strat for him. And he, he beat my ass. Chiefly because during his phase transition, he's fucking invincible. When he's on his big tower goo, you just can't hurt him. You just kind of have to. It becomes a bullet hell game. You have to dodge his shit. And, uh, I like him. Yeah, I do too. Like, look, part of the fun of FromSoft games, especially new ones, is getting your shit pushed in a little bit. Like, the game's supposed to be hard. Yeah. It's nice that it's hard again. <laughs> I think he's got a good look. I think he's very unique. I think he was fun to fight. Lots of cool effects. Uh, I would throw him above Bale the Dread, but I know you really like Bale the Dread. Bale rips, but, like, I, I'm certainly happy with him being in the same tier. If you want to put him above that, I'm not fussed. Okay. I'm going to take these wins where I can get them. Dancer of Rana. It's another mausoleum That's fight. the one that's way the hell out of the way, though, right? That is in the blue zone uh, on a little tiny island that you have to go through a whole thing for. Wittershins bullshit. I'll get into that at some point. On so I, I can't believe I didn't mention out of the podcast. No, because it's become your new catchphrase. So I, I, have, to, I have to get this off mm-hmm. my chest. There's this thing that Shadow of the Earth Tree does where to go... In Elden Ring, if I want to go somewhere that's north of my current location, you know what I do? I go fucking north. I get on my horse and I go north. Maybe I have to find a specific road. Maybe I have to go around a corner and like, oh, the road's over here. In Shadow of the Earth Tree, there are at least four occasions, I'm not being hyperbolic, where to get to a place that is in one part of the map, I have to go to an entirely different part of the fucking map and start doing goofy bullshit. <laughs> I don't find the bullshit that goofy, but I'm also not offended by the idea that uh, you can't get there from here, you can't get there from anywhere. Um, that's part of the fun of a Dark Souls game for me. So it, it, it I start off not caring as much as you do. Um, the long way to say, I'm never going to that fucking island. That's optional content that I have to do stupid bullshit for. I'm already upset I have to go through a hole and a hole and another hole and up a well and across a bridge and across another bridge and across another bridge and up a hole and down an elevator to get to a mandatory part of the game. I'm certainly not doing this for optional content. How would you rate this character? Um, I think the Dancer of Rana is a fine boss fight. I think I like Black Jail Knight better. Um, but I like the Dancer of Rana's lore implications. Because, I'm going to get her name wrong, um, Tanith, I think? Tanith, yeah. Uh, she either is Tanith or is related to her. She certainly seems to be from the same place. Yes. I like the Dancer of Rana uh, for reasons that aren't related to her at all. I happen to know she drops a um, set of clothes that are light enough that you can wear them and still get the full benefit of the Blue Dancer charm, which gives you more damage depending on how light your load is. That's pretty sick. That way you could be dressed as a dancer with the dancer charm. Yeah, that's I like awesome. that. Good job, from Soft. I'm never gonna have that, but I like it anyway. Uh, I'm gonna edge her just above Black Jail Knight for the lore. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, golden Hippopotamus. Ah, uh, Golden Hippo. I had uh, Golden Hippo was a rough afternoon for me. That was it was fun. It was a little challenging boss to learn the 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 ins and outs of. Basically, the biggest part of the biggest problem being. Learning how to live the first ten seconds of the boss battle. <laughs> um, but for you, it was a different story. I had a very mage-focused build, and I needed somebody to tank for me so I could hit the enemy with magic. And there is so much load time, even with as much effort as they put into between, you know, minimizing the run back, as we discussed in the, the full Shadow of the Because the run back to the hippo is go through a door. Yeah, it's nothing. Um, but like, it was just getting so annoying to, you died, load screen, come back in, summon, or don't, get, get through the eaten. door, summon, get eaten, die again, you know. Uh, so I had to switch my build to end up beating this boss. A lot of help from my compatriot here. Um, so I find it very frustrating in that sense, but 
after having finished the game, there were other areas I should have explored and just come back and fought this boss when I was a little stronger. It wouldn't have been half as big of a deal. Um, drops a pretty cool... Well, not drops, but you can get a pretty cool spike throwy move out of it. Uh, I'm going to say... I don't know, where would you put the hippo? I, I would put the hippo firmly in C tier. Nothing to write home about, but didn't piss me off. Uh, where in C? Well, there are also... This hippo exists several times on the world map without the cool crucible spells, and it's fine there, too. You know, I, I think in that sense, I'll put it at the top of C, actually. Because it, it's at least got some new, unique stuff going for it. I do like its crucible hedgehog spell that it makes. Yeah, and that was a really cool mid-fight surprise. Yeah. Um, what about, uh, Commander Gaius? Uh, one, love the name. Two, is he... I don't know the lore implications of Gaius. I know he was one of Radon's rivals. Is he also one of, like, Barricka's kids? Is he a member of the Golden I Lineage? Don't, I don't think so. I think he's just his homie or something. Like, he was... He's very cool. Or he Mesmer's has, homie, that is to say. Uh, he... He's got, like, Radon... He's got, like, gravity magic and a thing he rides. He's... I would call him the DLC's Radon. Except. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think he's really fun. He was hard the first time, and he's squatting his ass over five of my shards. So he is a mandatory boss. Um, he only took me two tries, and that's just because when I got to him the first time, I was pretty exhausted. I'm pretty sure I won and dunned him, yeah. but like I was out of flasks. Um, so like it was a fight. Well, no, I wasn't exhausted. I just didn't realize how much horse was suggested. Uh, oh, see, I think fighting him on the horse was terrible. He's His horse is faster than your horse. Yeah, so I don't need his horse to be faster than my horse, or my horse to be faster than his, because I used a mounted weapon. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. That's right, everybody. I played this entire game, Elden Ring and Shadow of the Erd Tree, with the exception of switching my build to fight the final boss of Elden Ring, using a meme weapon, the Flail, because I love my Flail. I, nothing, has brought me more joy in this game than spinning around the legs of a dragon and breaking their ankles. It is a delight. Best mounted weapon, no other weapon can compare. We love you, Flail. Flail is our king. Now... Uh, that said, my favorite thing about Gaius is when you kill him and you go and you get his gear from the finger reader or what's left of her, um, you can't get his pants because he's not wearing his pants. Because for whatever reason, I forget the lore reason, he can't wear the pants, so he doesn't. But there is a dark elf over in that zone where you get all those shadow tree shards that has his pants. And you can go get those pants. And they talk about how they basically made him the pants as a joke. And that's, that's great. His that's legs good. are probably broke. They're if either I broken or they're withered from the magic or I, I, maybe they're gone from war. I don't know. That's great. That gets extra points. It does. That gets the cool drops points, even though it is specifically something he doesn't drop. Uh, a lot of people said he was as frustrating as the hippo. I disagree. Firmly disagree. Yeah. No, I think I, I, I am almost certain I won and dunned him. It was maybe a maximum of two, but I'm pretty sure it was just one long, one strong fight where I was out of flasks, but won anyway. Um, I'm going to drop in between Jagged Peak Drake Pear and Lamenter. That seems fair. Okay. Uh, the Dancing Lion Beast. The Divine Beast Dancing Lion. Uh, I can't well, see what the Well, there's two. Which one is it? Bellarat. Bellarat. That's the that's the one that is at the top of the Bellarat thing. I didn't fight the second one. Where's the second one? Oh, off in the fucking corner. It does. Um, it doesn't do any of the elemental damage. It does. Um, death blight. Oh, scary. Yeah. Well, I don't even know. Cats if... agrees. I hope that picked up that cat's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but. Um... So, tell, what what is your experience with this this fight? I mean, this fight was cool. This was the first deal. This is really the first DLC boss. Yeah. The game leads you here. It's at the end of, like, the first zone. You can fight the the mausoleum guy with the crossbow earlier, but this is the first real boss with a cutscene. He's cool. Uh, They're cool. It's several guys in a trench coat. Two guys, yeah. Uh, and the, the the lightning is dope. And, and I like that every time you fight the dancing lion, the dancing lion does a different elemental effect, like randomly. So the boss battle's never exactly the same. I every didn't know time. that. Uh, like, so, like, one time it'll be lightning, one time it'll be wind. I don't believe it changes it up once it goes into phase two. 
It just does one for that boss for that for that fight. I don't remember that. Uh, I don't remember it changing up. That is, I had lightning. Uh, I one shot this boss. Dope. Um, nice work. This is hard. Yes. Uh, I, I did it uh, while basically the emotional equivalent of yelling the whole time, uh, but I did manage it. Um, really cool boss fight, though. Like, zero points off for me kicking its ass. Yeah, it does ice and lightning and wind. I remember the lightning and I think the wind, but I, I don't know about the ice. But anyway, uh, I would say A tier. Where, where in A tier do you think? Uh, a tier seems fine. Below Bale, but Below uh, Bale? certainly okay. fun. Yeah, this was very cool. fun boss. Uh, probably one of my favorite bosses to summon an NPC companion for, even though it gives the extra uh, hit points. Because one, uh, Freya is essentially Iron Tarkus. She could beat this guy on her own. Uh, and two, she has a cool. She has like cool dialogue after, and that's fun. Yeah, that's awesome. I used Mimic tier, but um, so I'm going to say Mesmer the Impaler should be S tier. Yeah, no notes. Okay. Mesmer, Mesmer fucking rules. Um, that's, this is gen genuinely one of my favorite bosses in Soulsborne. Uh, it is a contender for Lady Maria of the Astral Clock Tower, uh, who is probably my favorite fight. No, that's not true. It's the Twin Princes. Um, but, like, only because I will do it all the time. You know, you know how you have a favorite sometimes food and then a favorite all the time food? The, it, Lady Maria is the special occasion favorite. Yes. Uh... And the Twin Princes is the staple, oh, good food time. I could do this all day, and yeah. I would love to. Dude, the Twin Prince is a great fight. But Mes Mesmer, no notes. This is great. He doesn't have too many hit points. His phase transition is great. His moveset is just bullshit enough to feel like he is, like he's not fucking around. Like, it's, it's real gamer hours in here. <laughs> There's one thing I have to praise. This is the best lock-on camera for a highly mobile aerial enemy in the franchise, in the FromSoft. I was never fucking confused about where Mesmer was. And it made it more cinematic. Yeah, because you can see all the cool shit he's doing instead yeah. of just running away screaming while, while your hands are over your head going, Oh my god, ah, where is he? He's gonna kill me! Also known as the Malekith technique. Exactly. Uh -huh. uh, and it certainly wasn't the fucking nameless king dragon uh where oh my god everything sucks time for here. motion sickness yeah time for dramamine if i could write dramamine on the little note note you can leave dramamine does that uh does that alleviate allergies is it is it just motion uh, sickness we're, we're moving on to flowey undertale uh, yeah, yeah yeah i think we are uh the shadow tree avatar which i i like a lot in spite of the fact that it's a very binary fight Either you are built to defeat this creature, or this creature is going to batter you relentlessly. I happened to be using a fire weapon when I went down there, purely on coincidence, for other reasons that we'll get to. Um, I, I fought this boss probably in the neighborhood of a dozen times, um, and slowly added more fire stuff to my arsenal, until I went, fuck it, I'm, I'm not redoing my entire build. I'm going to go beat the final boss, I will come back for you later, and then just switch my whole build to fire when I cannot have to remember what I need for the final boss. And I did that, and it was easy peasy lemon squeezy. I fought this boss twice. Once, because I I smelled the, the Sister Frida twist coming, I knew that third phase was coming, I could see it, I could see it in the stones, but like, he still got me. Uh... <laughs> uh and then the second time, I just fucking fucked him up. <laughs> I think it does really good drama, despite this being a big flower. Um, this is Flowey Undertale. He lives at the bottom of a hole. He does a bullet hell mode where he shoots flower petals at you. It's it, it's a hilarious reference for them to put in for no reason. Um, I really liked his dash, where he does the, the three dashes. Where in he a becomes row. bored of the real of the boreal valley from Dark Souls Three. Yeah, very quickly. but yeah. He, like he, it's really. It's better than Vort. I, I, I like it because it has the, like, Zack um, from League of Legends, put hands in ground, yeah. stretch them back, and fire yourself There's mechanic. just something about the momentum, too, that I enjoy uh, of dodging that and getting out of the way. It felt good, uh, even though it's such a small part of the fight. Um, I also like that when he does his big uh, bloom thing in the third phase, 
Uh, he, he gets tired afterward. Yeah. When he does his big explosion, he goes, oh, that took a lot out of me. Yeah, he has to take a little nap. <laughs> uh, I like that if you do the critical strike once you've knocked him down before he despawns, the next phase comes up with less health. That was cool. I watched you do that. Uh, I like that he bashes you in the head with his giant flower. Yeah. I like that the weapon you get from him is a giant flower with which you can bash people. Yeah. Uh, all around solid. I'd say A tier? Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, above the putrescent knight? Mm, not above Bale. Not above Bale. Not you for really, me, at least. You really like Bale. I'm going to give it to you. It's fine. Do uh, you not like Bale? He's fine. He's... <sighs> it's a really cool visual. It's a really cool lore character. And it's a damn decent fight. But I don't care. I, you know what this might be? I'm, Bale might be getting extra points from Egon. And that's the thing. I feel like I wandered into somebody else's video game. That yeah, I am... you, you, are, you are the side character. Yeah. You are a side character in Egon's story. Yeah. It's kind of like the person who helped me with the final boss. I did most of the work. But yeah, go off, King. Be happy about it. <laughs> um, and that has its own charms as well. Just Bale doesn't resonate with me. Cool. Not going to take him out of A tier, but... Uh, I don't feel as fondly about him as you. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, the Hinterland Tree Sentinels. Uh, I guess they've grouped them together because it's pretty oh, easy. Oh, the ones where you can you, you can fight both of them, but you don't gotta? Yeah. Unlike the ones outside the Royal Capital where you do have to beat them both. Otherwise, the one you killed respawns. Oh, I don't know if I knew that. Um, yeah, they're fucking Tree Sentinels. They're fine. I like Tree Sentinels. They would rate higher in the base game, but for the but for the DLC, I guess it was kind of nice to see them because lore wise, it's interesting that they're there, and like there are Tree Sentinels here just waiting to make sure no one gets past them into a place they're not allowed to go. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I like that. I like that Merica put them there because that's clearly what happened. Uh, but they are just Tree Sentinels. C, B... I was going to say C. I don't think they're as interesting as the Golden Hippo in this... Um, in this. Uh, yeah, yeah, so Sub-Hippo. Sub-Hippo, better than um, the Curse Blade? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Hinterland Falling Star Beast, which I did not fight. I imagine it's just a Falling Star Beast, but I did not fight it. I didn't fight it. If it's just a Falling Star Beast, I could raid it, because it's just a Falling Star Beast, but I didn't fight it, so it goes in the didn't fight so, unless you want to joust with me, uh, we have another S tier here in uh, Metier Mother of Fingers. I don't think mechanically this is an S tier fight. Really? I, I, I mean, I fought her like twice. I mean, it only took me a couple more tries. I was not as high level or Shadow Tree Fragment uh, I mean, as you. I mean, like, it, it's a cool fight, don't get me wrong. It's got incredibly interesting lore implications. I really like that. Uh, but and I really like the, the the phase transition where it becomes like it's, it's a singularity now and yeah. it's got singularity beams and shit. So very um, cool, just not mechanically incredibly challenging. I think there's also I might have to invoke my own bail rule here. I think there's also something that uh, that you're missing um, in that uh, I said about the uh, Elden Beast. That mm -hmm. it takes everything awesome about Medir yeah. and tosses it aside. And I feel like some of those fragments were picked up by the Mother of Fingers. And, it is in a big hole. And some of the attacks are very reminiscent. It's nowhere near as hard. Which I like because yeah. Medir is too hard. But it, it did evoke some of those vibes, so that was pretty cool. And it's also it got a lot of strong references to Rom, the vacuous spider from Bloodborne. Which I have not... Uh... Just some of the sideways attacks, spawning the buddies. Look, at the end of the day, I'm not going to fight you on it. I would personally put her in, like, A, high B. But if you want to put that in S tier... A, high B. Uh, I, I am absolutely... I am fine barracking because there is a boss that is going in S tier and I will fight you later. Uh, so, I am for uh, Met your Mother getting getting her S tier. We don't um, shake hands on account of principles. Uh, speculate as to why in the comments. But I would, I would have a gentleman's agreement with you on this. An accord. An accord. I know who you're talking about, and I would not put them in S tier. Very cool. A tier, absolutely. Not S tier. So, uh, yeah. Right there you go. Uh, and here's the guy you want to put in there. Count Emir, mother of fingers. No, but... <laughs> no. No. This is, a, this is an overblown NPC fight. He is. He's got some cool spells, and I like the lore and the story of it. Great lore, mid-mechanics, B. 
Uh, honestly, I was going to say Below the Golden Hippo. Oh, okay, sure. It was that... I was being nice because I like his lore, but that's more yeah, fair. Yeah, I, I feel... I, really, my favorite story in Shadow of the Earth Tree, my favorite yeah, the most quest weird, series. The most weird Bloodborne yeah. story? Yeah, that makes sense. It's just really cool. Um, I don't even like Bloodborne that much. That's the funny thing. Yeah. Uh, the Demi-Human Queen Mariga. Is that what I'm seeing here? I don't remember fighting a demi-human queen. She's way out on the on the shore. Wow. Oh, I kind of want to go fight her. She looks cool. Yeah, Mariga is cool. It's just a demi-human queen. Yeah, it's just a demi-human yeah. queen. Um, like, I like that Mariga is there uh, because she adds to the uh, Godfrey, Godfroy, Mariga, Mariga. This the, I, George R. R. Martin fucking. He, he he took the one Steve rule out behind a shed and shot it with a fucking shotgun, and that is king behavior. I love it, even though I can never remember Godric's name without a lot of effort. Godfric, Godcroy, Gidgron. I would love to fight Godcroy. Godcroy, he's... He's, he's out. like mostly transparent. He's like, uh, it's like an essence of Godric. He's like if you... He's the ghost, but like almost invisible. Yeah, Just yeah. Just like... He, doesn't do his almost does no damage, but is still there, just as if he walked past Godfrey. The, the music is playing, but like from the next room. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but let, let's focus on our demi human queen. Have you fought her? Yeah. Uh, where would you place her? It's a demi human queen, D tier. They're not actually good bosses. D tier, interesting. All right. Um, uh, above the single jagged peak drake. Yeah, they can be at the top. Better than the death right bird. I for lore like. Deathrite Bird is a better mechanical boss than a demi human queen, mm-hmm. but I like. But I was happy to see Mira go more. Okay, okay. Than some random Deathrite Bird. Uh, I don't. Oh no, I remember this fight. Yeah, Jory Elder Inquisitor. This... What a cool. So because of uh, my living circumstances, I tended to play this game really late at night. So you can imagine the fun I was having when I ran into Jory Elite Inquisitor at four in the morning after having gone through a series of elevators to hell. Just the... This this is the... Nine elevators down, this motherfucker has the world's most effective spirit calling bell. I'm allowed one mimic tier. This guy gets to summon 26 of his homies. Um... Also felt very reminiscent of some stuff in Bloodborne. Really cool boss arena very much reminded me of, like, I, I can't remember the fight, but there's definitely a fight it reminded me of from from, from, from previous some, some uh, FromSoft game, some Froft. Uh, <laughs> from a previous FromSoft game. Um, That's where God Croy is. <laughs> he's in some Froft. In Bone Bone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, the mouth is just not doing great right now. Uh, but, I, I, he's... Is is he is not he's not the boss fight. It's twenty six dudes in him are the boss fight. Side note: I don't like these guys because they have that dumb spiral spell, and I have beef with a different version of them later in the game. But it's not him. He didn't do that. <laughs> he's my, just the same kind of enemy. My argument would be top of B tier. Yeah, that's fair. And that's. I would say almost on vibes alone, but I like the mechanic of having to hide and like rush him. I and... liked the uh, I liked suddenly playing a Mass Effect game where I have to hide behind the waist high walls from, yeah. from the enemy's machine gun that he has. It's nice in a FromSoft boss fight to have a unique mechanic, especially when that unique mechanic isn't bad. Yeah, when it's when it's something cool and and like intrinsic and something that is intuitive. Because I was like, oh man, I bet you I can hide behind these uh, grave sites to hide behind his machine, to hide from his machine gun fire. Oh, I can. Oh shit, he's doing the circles bow because I'm hiding behind the thing. It was really good. The teleporting and stuff, uh, some some stuff fell. It's fine. We're all very excited here. Uh, Midra. S tier. Lord of the Frenzied Flame. Lord of S tier. Well, not Lord of S tier. S tier, but not Lord of S tier. Come on, my guy. Fine. It was a good fight, but it wasn't Mesmer good. The guy's like Diet Mesmer. You take that back. He's, um, Cherry Mesmer. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, he just S tier, I think. Yeah, I'll put him even above uh, Metter. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> yes, yes, the mouse knows. Snuck in there. <laughs> I did think he was really cool. It was a really cool fight. This is the guy I, I arrived at and went, oh, I don't need to be here. It's, I'm not ready for this yet. And I came back and handed him his ass. 
Um, but he was cool, cool character, cool build up, cool yeah, he, area. He took me on a couple times. Not that he was amazingly, ridiculously over hard. He was a challenge. I had to take him seriously. But he was so cool, and I'm so happy to have a frenzy boss. Yeah. To have the Lord of Frenzy there. It was cool to see the Yilo stuff like fleshed out on. Yeah, I just because Frenzy is so underutilized in the base game because a bunch of the content got cut. It's just it was really cool to see. It was at the end of a zone I really like. Uh, he was at the end of a dungeon I really like, and he himself was super cool. He has a great cutscene, and you get to beat up an old man. A plus, n S tier, no notes. <laughs> I would maybe put him at the bottom of A, around the top of B, that that zone, on my own. But I, I respect it. So I, we, the, the accord is that is, is the accord. That's is, exactly what I thought is, you were is exactly about. Yeah. one to one. Like because that's exactly where I would put Metir. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, we got another one. Was another one of them red bears? Yeah, we got uh, Arugula, oh. the great red bear. Arugula, man, you look at you. Maybe need to lay off the lay off the deer, homie. It's, it's you, you fluffy. We didn't fight that one. Um, Divine beast dancing line in the temple. I didn't fight this one. Did you? That's the one that does death blight. I have not. I do not believe I fought. I don't okay. believe I fought this one. I just know where he is. Um, this was a Dark Souls 2 boss in that it looked really cool and I beat its ass immediately. Yep, same. Romina saying to the bud, cool design, excellent centipede stuff, cool rot boss. Need to have a rot boss who isn't, um, a Melania? That's cool. Yeah. Um. That big weird monster points for me. Yeah. Lots of pink like that too. Yeah, big spinny. Does a, does a rollout but is much more fair than the Godskin Nobles rollout. Lots of references to, uh, Quelog. Yeah, lots of... Yeah. Uh, all cool. Not very hard. No. Not very hard. <laughs> um, I think the not very hard is going to drop her down into B tier for me. Yeah. Do you think better than Dryleaf Dane? Uh, yeah, probably. In that I in that she gets a boss health bar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny, actually. I don't think any of the other um, well, cause homies Dane, are here. Well, because that's an NPC gank fight. They don't have boss health bars. If you go and fight Dane when you fight him by himself, he does have one. Oh, okay. I'm going to skip the next one. I think we should do that one last. Absolutely agree. Uh, the Ghost Flame Dragon who has an... Oh, no, it's Great Bridge Ghost Flame Dragon. There that, were two of those. That's that interesting. That is the one... One of those is going to be the there's one... three. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. They're all the same boss. One's going to have a bunch of dudes around it, and that's extra challenge because for some reason they're fighting a dragon and you show up to also fight the dragon and they stop fighting the dragon to fight you? All the dragons were Ghost Flame Dragons. Except for the ones at Jagged Peak. Those are Drakes. <laughs> well, no, that's what that's what they're called. So all of the uh, world boss dragon fights are ghost flame dragons. Yeah. And I didn't realize Because you're in the Land of the Dead. Yeah. I remember this now. Um, I think... Let's go ahead and rate them all together. Yeah, they're I think all the same boss. My favorite one is the one on the Cerulean Coast. Um, I just liked the set piece a little better. Um, and I think that's the one where there's all the guys. I don't remember if they're actively fighting the dragon, but like the ghost flame dragon Cerulean like brings Coast them is up. Blue flowers, right? Yeah. No, that's not gonna be the one with all the guys. Uh, the one with all the guys is in Shadow Altus, I would guess. Okay. Uh, it's. <gasps> I wonder if I ever killed that one. I might the, have ridden it, past it. It's the one where there's soldiers fighting it, and if you start fighting it, also the soldiers will stop fighting it to fight you. It like summons the dead. The yeah. one in the yes, Cerulean that Coast. that is the one that yeah. is a t that is a, also a tibia mariner for some reason. I like that one. That was my favorite of them. Then put that one at the top of. I mean, they're cool. It's a cool dragon. Uh, it's neat. It, it, I like fighting dragons, and it's got new mechanics in that it's ghost flame stuff, and that's cool. But ultimately... I'm going to say... You know what? I like the parentheses of the Lamenter and uh, the Elder Inquisitor. So let's do this, this, and that. There you go. That's fair. Uh, Rilana, Twin Moon Knight. Uh, Rilana was great. I I think I ended up fighting her six or seven times because because she's got she she quick with it she's in your face she's not mess around she's got cool lore she's um I do like her lore a lot Relena Relena right because Relana is the one in is the carrion uh, this is Relana Renala Renala this is this is my go yeah. for me. Uh... <laughs> Renala and Relena, Relana, are twins. Uh, are they? I, I thought she was Renala's daughter. No, I think they're. I think they're. They're sisters, right? You might be right. I don't remember. They're related. Because the twin moon. 
Yeah, I, I just, uh, I thought that was, I thought that was Ronnie. I thought she was related to the Ronnie the is Ronaldo's daughter. Right, I thought they were, they both were. But you might be right, you might be right. It's a very dense game with a lot of weird lore and everyone has the same name. It's yeah. tough to keep track of. Uh, but she's cool. Her, her moveset is cool. The thing she dro- the sword she drops are cool. Uh, and she's... Um, the, 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 thing I re- the reason I was saying that is while her sister was being a nerd studying books, she was out studying the blade and is much harder. Her dedication <laughs> to Mesmer is very cool too. I really like... A good, it's a good dragon for yeah. a big bad. Um, reminds me a lot of Loretta. Yeah. Yeah. Same energy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Even if Rolana is much cooler than Loretta. I, I would... This fight was fine. I breezed past it. This was one of my one-shots. Um, so I didn't get to enjoy it as much as... I would say B-tier. You'd say B-tier? Where yeah. would you like to put in B-tier? Um, past the duo Drake. Um, but before Romina, because the vibes aren't as cool. Okay. I'm I'm fine with that. Okay, Black Knight Garu is this the tongue guy? Yeah, that's yes, the, that's, that's the, the guy. guy. That's the, who, what that tongue do. Um, I, he gets points for the tongue. It was not expected. I'm gonna put him ahead of Yoshi. Tongue is worth a lot. You know what? I'm not gonna put him ahead of your your homeboy here who gives you the thing you want, but he will go right next to him. <laughs> so now we come to the final question. How much does being a cunt take off? Radon and Mikola's rightful S tier. I wouldn't. I don't think I would say rightful S tier. I really don't think I would. And we discussed this in less certain terms in the previous podcast, whenever that was released compared to this. Um, I was disappointed that this wasn't a weird monster. I was disappointed that this wasn't the the god Mikola in all his glory. Um, more visually similar to uh, St. Trina. And I accept the explanation. And I just said during this podcast that one of my favorite boss fights in all of Soulsborne is the Twin Princes. This isn't the Twin Princes. No, this is an anime fight. <laughs> and I don't like anime. Uh, like, Consort Radon and Promise Consort Radon... Uh, the actual names for the boss, but in the second form, it's it's the twin princes. It's, it's, it's all right. So it's not the twin princes. It is uh, the thing the twin princes was based on. It is elder and younger Toguro from Yu Yu Hakusho. <laughs> I didn't watch Yu Yu Hakusho, so there again, this is much like the the vacuous Rom thing. Uh, you, I have no reference for this. Uh, this uh, like all right. This boss battle is too ridiculous. It should be. It should be punishingly difficult. This is your. This is the last DLC. This, but this dude is harder than, like, Gale. <laughs> I would say he's a similar feeling level of unfairness as the Nameless King, without feeling as cool. Um. So, like, the mechanics uh, don't feel as fun to interact with. I don't feel like a badass fighting this guy. He feels somewhat tedious. Um, the visual spectacle is really impressive, and I will give a special shout out to the the Mikola Smooch. Uh, I think that's a really interesting mechanic. I think it's really compelling because you aren't told what it does until you find out or look it up on the internet, as I did. Oh, I found out. I fucked around and I found out. Got my heart stolen. Uh, and if you've done all the other content beforehand, you can get around it, which is neat. Oh, that is neat. The Mikola's Great Room, retaining only the power to uh, break charms that you get from Flowey Undertale from the Shadow Tree Avatar. If you have that in your use bar, it works like Moog Shackle. Oh, cool. You use it when you've got the little eagle on your head and it breaks it. That's pretty cool. Um, I like that. But, like, that would be dependent on you having fucking time to do that. (laughs) I would say this fight, even though in terms of skill expression... And drama, it is very uh, climactic. It is lesser than the sum of its parts. It's I, not as cool as Moog. It's not as cool as Radon. It's not as cool as the Twin Princes. See, for me, all right. So Twin Princes is separate. For me, it's absolutely 
uh, it's absolutely as cool as a cooler than most of the other bosses. This is a big over the top anime fight scene at the very end of the of the whole game and it's DLC. This is like a beautiful magnum opus of a boss fight visually and lore wise and like in terms of what exactly the, they do in the order that they do it there's a and all of Radon's moves look super fucking cool and he incorporates moves from like Moog because he's Moog's body because he's Radon's mind controlled soul piloting Moog's body which is dope um <laughs> But, it, for all that I like all of the lore version, all of the, you know, all of the non, specifically the combat parts, I also would rate it lower um, for a different reason than you, in that it is too fucking hard. Like. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that, that's, that is a big part of it. Like, it's why it feels empty for me, is because... As hard as Moog is, he feels fair. There are ways to get around him that don't require the shackle. He's a boss fight. As hard as Radon is, he feels fair. There are many points of fighting Consort Radon where my options are have enough defenses and hit points to tank it or die. I don't know what I'm supposed to do to dodge many of those moves. And they're cool, and they're and they're awesome looking, and they're cinematic, and they're a pain in my ass. I don't know how, I don't know the kind of dedication I would have to put in to be able to fight this guy on my own. What I did was I summoned someone who had made an all damage build, and I switched to my tankiest stuff. I didn't change my stats around, but I switched to my tankiest stuff, and I just tanked. I just drew aggro and tanked, while this person annihilated him. I... Me and Mimic Tear did eventually get it done. And the fifth time I beat him, I don't think he'll he'll be too hard anymore because I'll have learned his move set by then. But like I think I will rise to the challenge of Pro of Consort Radon, but I'm not rating Consort Radon two years from now. I'm rating Consort Radon now. Unless we get that five thousand likes or whatever. Yeah, then. again. Yeah. We'll raid him tomorrow. And having beaten him by myself, to be fair, with Mimic Tear, uh, he's bullshit. He is a nearly Madeer level of bullshit. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't quite approach that level of unfun that the Elden Beast is. But it. Well, that's just because it's it is cooler and better designed than the sure, Elden Beast. Sure, sure, sure. Radon, for all that he is up in my fucking grill all the time, doesn't run from me. Yeah, that is true. He does the exact opposite. Uh, I would rather you do that. I would rather you be in my fucking face, in the paint, us fighting like men and me getting my shit kicked in because you're much bigger and have a bigger health bar um, than you running from me and I have to chase you like it's a fucking Scooby-Doo chase sequence. I don't ha I hate that shit. Uh, on my own, I'll say it first this time so that you can you can move us around. Um, I would probably put him high B, but not the top of B. I like some of those other guys for lore reasons. Uh, I would probably put him in low A, not the top of A, because, um, it's, it's just, I fought him like 60 times, guys. It was, no, it was rough out here. And, like, I'm just, I'm tired of looking at his fucking face. <laughs> but I have to recognize quality when I see it. All right. Um, I think I can compromise at bottom of A. Uh, and that's that's the list. If you want a screenshot, if you skipped here from earlier, uh, you missed all the cool stuff we talked about, like uh, Godcroy yeah. and Bone yeah. Bone. Hilariously, this is much longer than the podcast on the DLC. Um, well, because we didn't really talk much about spoilers there. We did here. 